What's going on guys? It's been a long time since I've created a video for this channel, if you can believe that. I know I've been putting content out, but it's kind of just been content that I've clipped from the past and just like kind of re-uploaded to show you tutorials and different videos. Um, I spent the last three to four months or so roughly not creating content for YouTube or anything like that, but just vigorously improving my products, my courses. Obviously, I spent a lot of time uh, improving and turning online arbitrage pro into resale university. If you're interested in figuring out, you know, what resale university is and how it can obviously help you become a reseller, take you from beginner to advanced, or if you're already advanced, obviously it's going to teach you how to, you know, source profitable products in a number of different ways with software. Like I'm going to show you in today's tutorial, uh, you can check out the link in the description. There should be a link down in there that says like how resale university can help you. Okay. But I've been vigorously improving that. Obviously, I relaunched it, completely redid it, added a bunch of new tutorials, a bunch of new software, a bunch of new techniques in that course. Um, on top of that, I spent a couple months redoing a lot of my Udemy courses, literally the top, the bestseller ones and the top ones. I completely just tore them down, rebuilt them up completely new. Some I kept some of the lectures, obviously, from the old ones that were still good. But like if they were like an hour or two, now they're like 10 hours long, literally redid everything. So that's what I've been up to for the past three to four months or so. Um, but I'm really excited to kind of go through a tutorial today. Today is not going to be like a, I plan this tutorial to kind of teach you book flipping. I'm literally going to go through this uh, e-flip like I'm sourcing. I was literally doing this already. And I'm literally going to start sourcing books for me, right? And then I'm just gonna kind of show you like an over the shoulder look of how I'm sourcing books currently for my own reselling business and buying up books to resell on Amazon to make a profit. I've been averaging about 10 to $15 profit per book. And then obviously some of the books you see like a $50 or like a hundred dollar. And one of the books obviously recently I had like a 200 and I think $10 might've been 220, 200 plus uh, dollar profit margin. That's not typical, but you will see that every once in a while. And obviously some of them are $40. So we're gonna go through an e-flip tutorial here today on how to source for books uh, on a number of different websites online to resell on Amazon for a profit, okay? The great part about this is you don't have to spend any money until you solidify your profit margin online like I'm gonna show you, right? Once you know you're pretty much guaranteed you're not guaranteed because obviously things can change on the Amazon listing. And, you know, I'm also going to give you kind of a tool here in a second of how I approach it. Uh, if, you know, if you, God forbid, you do source it and it's not profitable, you can always ship it back or return it, especially if you're buying it on eBay or a number of the other places. You can always just return it and you're still not out any money because if you bought it for 50 bucks and then the buy box price changes by the time you get it, you just return it, ship it back, and nobody's at a loss, right? So this is pretty much how I do it. And like I said, I'm literally doing this myself. So I've created a spreadsheet. Now, you don't have to use a spreadsheet. You can use Inventory Lab if you like. A lot of people use Inventory Lab, and that works very well. For me specifically, I like spreadsheets. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just for the sake of kind of showing you in case you can't read it because it's a little bit small. So see here, like I have the book name, I literally put that down so that when the book comes to me and I get study guide for, uh, what is that? Patho patho pathophysiology to my house. I literally come in, I go control F on my PC. There's a way to do it on Mac. I'm just not sure what it is. I'm sure it's like control something or something very similar. And I'll literally search like study guide for patho, and then I'll pop it up and go find and it'll pop it up literally supposed to have this column selected. So I'll go like, oh, I have the pathology book or I have the pathophysiology book. I'll search that and it'll pop it up right for me. I'll go to that part of my spreadsheet because obviously right now I don't have a lot, but as I buy more and more books, you can see recently it auto calculates as well. Let me kind of push this down a little bit to like 11 so you can kind of see it. It auto calculates at the bottom right here for how much I've spent, which over the past, I don't know, like two hours roughly. I haven't been sourcing for two hours, obviously, but just like two hours, I've been on and off sourcing with eFlip, kind of doing some other things and editing some videos for Resale U. Um, and then it auto calculates. And I know my profit margin on every single book, obviously, but overall total in the business for this specific month. I usually break it month to month and that's kind of how I approach it. Okay. So you'll see 
I always set up an auto calculating spreadsheet. You can do the same or you can use inventory lab. Both of them work very well. I'll take the book name. So I know it just like I said, right? I'll take where I sourced it from. So God forbid something happens. I don't ever receive it. I can go back into my, my invoices or my email and figure out what's going on with that book. I know where I sourced it from and why I'm not receiving it. And I can look into it. That doesn't happen often, but every once in a while it will happen. And you want to kind of keep track of that. I'll also put the Amazon link. So when I do receive this book, I can literally just click this link and then list it from the back end of my seller central, okay? I'll also put, took a little bit for that to load, but you'll see right there, so boom. This buy box price on here is 38.95 currently, and um, it looks like that's what it was when I sourced it, obviously, and I purchased it for 12.72 on eBay, and obviously the book flipping software uh, spit that out for me. So I keep track of all this data, obviously the new, you know, paperback or hardcover, if it's books specifically, whether it's new or used, obviously with books, um, because there's usually a buy box price on new and used. Uh, then the buy box price for when I purchased it. So I know immediately when I get it, if like I look at the buy box when I receive this and the buy box price is all the way down to like 15 bucks and I purchased it for 12.72 and the buy box price when I purchased it was higher, I know immediately without even having to look into it further, like I need to return this book because it's not profitable anymore. So God forbid, like especially with books when you're ordering from places like Abe's Books or Valor Books or eBay sometimes and you're getting it shipped media mail, it might take a week or two to get to you sometimes, not always. And so in that short window, assuming you're you're still doing all your, your kind of research, like I'm going to show you here in a second of how to actually vet these books for good buys you shouldn't have too many listings change their buy box price drastically, right? Because you're doing your research ahead of time. That said, God forbid they do and something drops significantly. If it takes a week or two for you to get it and then you see that the buy box price has changed, you can simply return the book and you're not out any money, right? So it's literally, it's practically no risk. Things are gonna change, but that's pretty much how I approach it and that's how you can mitigate your risk to the most for the most part, okay? So the buy box price, when I purchased it, I keep track of whether I received it and listed it. So if it says red, because obviously I just ordered all of these, if it says red, then I haven't received it yet. If I fill it yellow, that means I shipped it into FBA. If I fill it green, that means I've just received it and I haven't done anything with it, okay? So obviously some of these are gonna go green when I receive these and then they'll all go yellow when I ship them into FBA. You don't have to ship them into FBA. I always recommend shipping them to FBA because it's less work for you. And uh, obviously it's just easier for you're going to get the buy box at a higher price, but we're not really going to get into that specifically in this video. Okay. So obviously what I purchased it for, what I sold it for on Amazon, the fees that I paid, and then the profit on every item. So I can see if that item was profitable. And then obviously, like you said before, it capped, it auto calculates at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Okay. So that's how we kind of approach that. Now let's start sourcing here. Now, if you guys do, before we get into it, if you guys want to learn book flipping specifically, it's a great time because textbook season, it's, it's, Toward the end of the the January window of textbook season, I think the first couple weeks in January, my sales have been like up significantly with a lot of book selling because kids are going back to school. They need textbooks. So books have just been super profitable and flipping off the shelves recently. Although it does go into February, I believe, into like early to mid February. But then obviously sales are going to die down again. But honestly, it's still like people always ask me, can you just flip books during textbook season or do you flip books year round? Obviously, I source more books pre-textbook season. There's three textbook seasons, but two main ones. You can just Google when Amazon textbook season is, and you can look that up if you want. But I source them all year round. They're still profitable finds, and they're still profitable books all year round. You don't just have to source for textbook season. The only difference is that I source more for textbook season when the, the textbook seasons are approaching, right? But other than that, nothing changes and I still source books. But if you guys wanna learn this, I'm gonna drop a uh, discount link to my FBA book flipping course on Udemy. If you're just interested in book flipping, obviously, I think that's gonna be like a $17.99 discount link is the current one that I have. You can also always go to, so that'll be in the description if you wanna just learn this um, and how to do this with eFlip or Zen Arbitrage. I personally like Zen Arbitrage a little bit better, but I flip back and forth between both of them because they both work well and I like to kind of get different looks of different books, right? Uh, so you can use Zen Arbitrage or eFlip. I will drop affiliate links to both of them down in the description. Both of them come with free trials if you want to check them out. Also, like I said, I'll drop the $17.99 discount link to uh, the Udemy course, or you can just check out Resale U and you can learn book flipping as well as plenty of other business models, not just book flipping. I think it comes with seven total and a number, it literally will spit you out the best ways to go as you kind of progress through the course. I completely redid the course. But enough about that, let's jump into this. 
All right, so now we're gonna source E-flip, and I do this a number of ways. I always kind of switch my levers on how I actually approach this. I usually go a little bit kind of uh, more specific, but because I've been doing this a little bit already, I'm gonna go super broad for demonstration purposes and showing you guys. And then obviously what I recommend that you do is if you're sourcing this yourself, go super specific with your levers, like I'm gonna show you here, and then slowly broaden it out as you need more and more books to actually look at. But the benefit of software like this is you can use the levers on this or on Zen. They both work very, very similar, although Zen's levers are like, um, what is it, horizontal, and E-flips are vertical. That's pretty much the only difference, and there's other small, minute differences, but they both, the sourcing strategy works very, very similar, right? So I'm gonna take the buy, the used buy box price, or the used, uh, price here to like 25 cent minimum. We'll also go like $30 minimum on the on the um, minimum uh, new price, excuse me, and we'll go like $20 minimum Amazon price. And this is super, super broad, okay? I'm not gonna touch the trade-in value. I used to recommend doing this, but for whatever reason, I think there's like a bug in the eFlip software currently that if you add any trade-in value, it doesn't come up with anything, right? So I think that's just a bug after, cert like I still sell all my books. It still shoots me out books from ones that like, we had trade in value and still do, but for whatever reason, this lever like doesn't seem to work, so don't use it, okay? You can also add max used offers or minimum used offers and, and kind of one of the other levers that works really well is like decreasing your minimum, your max rank. So this is best seller rank on the platform. What's the average rank? What's the current rank? I'm gonna keep it at 250 roughly, like I said, just to kind of, just for demo purposes and just to kind of show you a broad overview of the types of books that you can find. So I hit search and it should eventually pop up with a number of different books here in a second. And there we go. So as you can see, it pops up with a number of books here. And I'm just gonna go right to like page five to get some new looks of books. You can also just drop this row thing down to like 100 um, or 50. It's currently set at 20. But one of the things I like about eFlip is as you're sourcing, it's gonna slowly um, kind of, it, it, they'll turn gray as you've looked at them. So you can kind of see which ones you've already looked at so you don't waste your time there. Now there's two main ways that I use eFlip to make money. One is reselling used books and we're gonna cover that in a different tutorial on another day, right? Another is doing new books. So what I used to recommend is you check a book and then you check the used and then you check the new. But I work a lot faster just doing one of them and just focusing on one of them because I can then be thinking like, okay, I'm sourcing new right now or okay, I'm sourcing used. If I'm constantly flipping back between am I sourcing new, am I sourcing used, it takes me a lot longer to go through them. Obviously, I'm gonna go through them slow here to show you, but then you'll see me source through them fast and you'll see just how fast you can do this and how much money you can make in a short period of time once you get good at it and once you understand it, obviously, like I do, okay? So I'm gonna right click on this and open it in a new tab. I'm also gonna click this down and go to the book finder. What both of these links are is this one right here is gonna take you to the Amazon listing detail page for this book on Amazon, right? And we're gonna compare the price of this on Amazon and the Amazon listing and the new buy box price, because remember, in this tutorial, we're searching for new books and discrepancies in prices on other websites from, from that book and Amazon's new price, right? So that we can profit from the difference, okay? So when I click the down arrow and I went to book finder, that's gonna take me up a software that's gonna find the book all over the internet, used uh, examples on the right, but obviously we're not sourcing used right now, okay? And new on the left, okay? So we're primarily sourcing new, we're primarily looking on the left over here, and we want to see the difference in prices on these left books. The lowest one currently is 28.24 on eBay, and that's in the US. You wanna make sure when you do this, and I'll cover this here in a second, that you're not sourcing international editions, that you're not sourcing teacher editions, and that you're not sourcing um, like a different condition, right? So like if it's a paperback, you're not sourcing hardcover. Very rarely will that happen in this software, but you still wanna make sure of it. I have seen it from time to time. So we're gonna go to the detail page here and we're gonna look at the buy box price. And the buy box price for this is a paperback, I believe. I believe it's paperback, yes. So the buy box, oh, sorry, no, it's a hardcover. And the buy box new price here is 130 for the hardback, okay? So if that's true, then obviously this is a potential good buy because it's only 2824. So I can profit from the difference, obviously counting the Amazon fees from buying it for 2824 and then selling it on Amazon for $129. Now they're all not usually like this and they all don't usually look this good right off the bat. It's just kind of a funny coincidence, but obviously you're gonna to get to see a good example of this here in a second. So let's first make sure that there's no inter in international edition, then no teacher edition, obviously, and or instructor edition, that's the other word. You wanna check all three of those words. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. 
And then obviously we're going to check to make sure it's the same condition. Is it hardcover? Is it uh, paperback? And then we're going to check to see if I can sell it and if it's profitable. Okay. So next thing we're, we're going to want to do is we, we know the hardcover price is about 130. We're going to click on this listing right here. So click on the price and it'll take you to this eBay listing, which is US. And then what you want to do on the listing first and foremost is, okay, it's shipping from the United States, but the shipping is for some reason 2720. So that takes the price actually, and that's a rare, you're getting a weird look from a book here because usually the shipping is either free or very, very cheap on eBay or on any of the other sites, honestly. This is a weird kind of listing, but we're gonna roll with it, okay? So the shipping price is 2720. Uh, so the price totally obviously is gonna be about 4720, not counting tax. We'll round it up to 50 to play it conservative, okay? So we're going to spend about 50 into this book once we do that, all right? Now, once we do that, obviously, if it's the same, then we still have a chance to profit because we buy it for 50 bucks and we can ship it into FBA and sell it for about 130, okay? So now we need to know, okay, is this hardcover number one? Is it an international or a teacher edition? And obviously, we don't want either one of those. So it is a hardcover. You can see it right here. I want to look at the pictures to make sure it does look like it's in new condition, looks like it's in decent condition and you're protecting yourself because when you buy this, it says it's in new condition. So you can obviously sell it on Amazon because you have the proof of the receipt slash invoice that you sourced it in new condition. I always like to look at if it's on eBay as well, like the, the seller and what's their record of feedback. Like, so a lot of times if they'll list it as new and they have like a lot of good feedback and it's like thousands and they're a top seller on eBay, I just inherently trust them obviously because they wouldn't risk listing it like that. Uh, most people anyway. Uh, for a bad rating on eBay. No, no top seller is going to do that. So the format is hardcover. I also want to look at the condition right here. So a new unread, unused book in perfect condition, blah, blah, blah. But then we want to open up a search bar by going control F on PC. Again, I don't know what it is on Mac, but you can, I'm sure Google that or you already know. Just you want to search the web page right here for instructor edition to see if that pops up anywhere in the listing. It doesn't. So that's a good sign. Or teacher interdict. Uh, teacher one, which only pops up once and it's down here in the review. So it's not in the actual listing. So that's a good sign. And then international edition, which doesn't pop up either. So teacher international and instructor, none of those words popped up on the listing. So you're good to go because you don't want to source those editions. They're not the same. Okay. So this looks like a pretty good listing. I can then go ahead and buy this for about 50 bucks roughly with tax once that's included. And then I hope I could ship it back into FBA and sell it for 120 or 130, excuse me. And the buy box currently is sold by Anoka Media at 130, but then there's the lowest price on this is $80. Now, one of the there's a couple different um, extensions here that you can use. I'm not going to get into them in this video because I've covered them extensively in other videos. So I'll just do kind of like a beginner. You know, I'll take you through a beginner example here of like using Amazon and the FBA calculator on Amazon, which you can just Google. But you can also use Jungle Scout, which is an extension that's going to show you sales data. You can also use AMZ Scout Calculator, which is an extension that's going to show you the profitability of it on that listing. So it's an FBA calculator that's free that you can download as an extension. You can also use online seller add-on on the actual listing to see what the sales or who, how many of the specific sellers are on this listing, selling FBA, selling new, selling used, what their prices are. It's very, very valuable. So those are the three extensions I recommend that you grab for this. I will link um, Jungle Scout down in the description if you want. The other two are free. Uh, so you can get AMC Scout Calculator and Online Seller add-on right there. 100% free. Just download them in the Chrome store. Jungle Scout is, I believe, $29 a month, but it's a complete lifesaver. It's going to save you a lot of time so you don't have to scroll down and actually look at the uh, the bestseller rank and then obviously know what that means, Okay. So the first thing that we want to do before we even understand the profitability of this is it's under 250,000. We know that obviously because we set our levers there, but you still want to check it. So 100, where's the listing? 170 or 171,000 in books is still selling pretty quickly. So I'm good with that. That's fine. Obviously I'd run the Jungle Scout extension normally to just check that, but I want to kind of give you an uh, a beginner version of this. So we're going to take the first ISBN and we're going to take it into Seller Central to see if we can sell it. Because if we can't sell it and we're gated for this, then why are we even researching? It doesn't even matter. So can I sell it as new? I can sell it as new. Okay, great. So everything checks out, right? It's still selling well on Amazon. I can actually sell this. The profit looks like it's there. So let's make sure. I still have the ASIN um, copied. So I'm going to go with that here in a second. So it's 130 is what we can buy. We can actually sell it for. I copied the ASIN. Now I want to take it into the Amazon FBA calculator here. So I'm going to paste it into the calculator. 
and you will see the item price right here because I plan on selling it on FBA, which is Amazon fulfillment. If you don't, you want to use this and then obviously have to estimate your shipping costs on the merchant fulfill side, but we're not going to do that. So the item price is about 130, I think it was. Uh, 130, yes. And the other offers on this are probably a little bit lower. So we can go 11 new to check them if you really wanted to. So right after that, we have another 130, a 144, a 150, and then they go up from there. So chances are the buy box price will stay roughly the same, if not go up a little bit, because there's a number of other offers, Amazon included right here, a lot higher than the than the dollar uh, or the 130 price. If 100, the 130 was the only price that was this high and every other new price was a lot lower than that, then you should anticipate the buy box price dropping. But because that's not what we're seeing here with the other sellers and their prices, I'm not worried about this. Honestly, by the time I get this and ship it into FBA, it'll roughly be the same, if not more, if not slightly less, but I always assume for that in my profit margin, like I'm gonna show you here in a second. So I can sell it assuming that the buy box price is 130. The shipping to Amazon fee is gonna be like a buck for me because I'm gonna ship it in with a number of other products. I never just ship the product in by itself. If you did that, it'd probably end up costing you like four or five bucks, but I don't do that. I ship it in with a bunch of products. And realistically, I'm just overestimating here. It's probably just gonna only cost me like 20 to 50 cents. The cost of my product was about 50, we said, because on eBay, it's 20, but then we have to pay for 27, 20, which is crazy shipping, but it's still profitable. So we're going to estimate a little bit high there at 50 and we're going to see what the profit margin is. So if I sell this on Amazon for 130 and I pay 50 bucks to get it and it costs me a dollar to ship it into FBA, excuse me, right here, I'm still going to net $51.45. So this is a great buy. This is a perfect random example that you got to see of a great buy. So what am I then going to do? I'm going to purchase this, obviously, but I'm not going to do that because I don't want to show you my, I'm going to do it after we're done with the video because I don't want to show you my address here, okay? I'd add it to my card, I'd purchase it, and then it'd probably end up being like 49 something with tax, right? So I'm going to round this up. I'm going to take everything into my spreadsheet and I'm going to show you exactly how I would do this, okay? So I'm going to write the real number in here after I obviously do it, but right now I'm just going to put $50 to estimate. I'm going to copy this down and turn it red so I know I haven't received it yet. The buy box price was $129.99 on Amazon. It is a new uh, hardcover book. I also need the listing title and the listing uh, actually on Amazon so I can just easily go back and relist it when I'm done. I bought it from eBay. And then we are going to copy the Amazon link right there so I know that. Double click so it's clickable. And then we're gonna paste this in here, right there. So Campbell Biology Concepts, blah, blah, blah. And then bam, once I buy this, I pretty much solidified a $50 profit margin or $51 profit margin in by simply buying this book, getting it, shipping it back into FBA and selling it on my Amazon seller account. So that's a perfect example of a profitable book that you can buy. I got really lucky here, honestly, just showing you the first one. Usually you have to sort through a couple. Every once in a while you have to sort through a bunch, but there are literally hundreds of pages of these. So I plan on literally just sitting here all day, sourcing as much as I possibly can. Obviously I'm gonna tally this up and I'm gonna try to keep this. I have a, a few grand to play with and I kinda still wanna order some wholesale as well, which is another kind of business model that Resale University teaches you that's a lot, that's really scalable like this. So I plan on scaling, you know, spending maybe a thousand or two on books here today. Um, but if you guys wanna learn this, like I said, I'm gonna end this here because I'm gonna actually buy this book and then I'm gonna start sourcing more. First and foremost, if you want to see more of these tutorials with software and me actually creating videos, drop a comment down below. First, give the video a like. Drop a comment down below, though. Let me know that you like these, and I'll start creating more for you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. I'll ask, I'll answer them down in the comments, but then I'll also potentially create a video answering your question, and I'll know ahead of time in the next tutorials to answer those questions and show you how I do them, okay? So that's first and foremost. Hope you liked the video. Let me know if you want to see more. Secondly, you can also go ahead and grab the FBA book flipping course from Udemy if you want, $17.99. Or if you're just interested in actually finding out if Resale University is for you, you can check out the free case study that's linked down in the description for Resale University. And that will take you through like a 10 minute short video explaining what it is, showing you some testimonials of people just like you that I've helped. And then you can try Resale University for just $1 for 30 days, okay? So hope you guys like this video. I'm gonna keep sourcing. Go out and source yourself. It's a great time to do so. And I'll see you in the next one.